Welcome all of our viewers and audience across the world here on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. As usual, you're going to hear Eddie's notifications when we start this, right? Because all of the streams are happening and I'm I'm a subscriber of my own content. I don't know if that makes me a little bit uh, a little bit weird, but um, we definitely obviously publish all of this stuff and most of the most uh, live streams that you're getting right now through all of this content is kind of our partner live streams, our EdTech Collective folks. And we're so excited to, to be joined by another one of those partners into Dashboard um, and how their integration with Canvas really helps with team-based learning. And I am a huge team-based learning fan, so I can't wait to kind of dive in with Brian and Julie and Karen. We had a chance to really get to know each other beforehand um, in this live stream, but I'm super excited to get to learn more about what they're offering and what they have to offer in your integrations with Canvas. As always, like, subscribe, do all of the things, especially hit that bell so you can get notified when these live streams do happen. If you have questions or if you just want to make a comment, you can always do that in any of the live stream platforms that we provide underneath the live stream. Brian, thank you so much for you and your team, Julie and Karen, for joining us. Karen was a little bit worried when we started. She couldn't change her background. I think it looks fantastic. Very chic um, bedroom there. Everyone's working from home. We get it. It's all, it's okay. Right, Garrett? Yeah, Brian, thank you so much. For, yeah. The princess room, which is even better. Mm -hmm. I said, my wife loves that we have the Funko Pops in the bedroom in the background. So she's really always excited about that. But Brian, tell us a little bit about how you got started in ed tech, maybe introduce your team members, and then we'll jump right in to team-based learning with Into Dashboard. Sounds great. They, Eddie, thanks to be here and excited to be working with Canvas as well. So thanks to everyone joining in. We love the concept of team-based learning. Always delighted to talk about it. Today, I'm joined by two colleagues. Uh, one is Julie Estes from the University of South Alabama, and one is uh, Karen George LeClaire from the Anti-Dashboard team. So um, what we'd like to start out with is just how we all ended up here. So by way of background, I actually came from the airline industry. I used to be the chief financial officer of an airline, absolutely loved it, and our airline grew fast. We grew from about 400 to 800 employees in 18 months. Our biggest challenge was finding the right people for our team. And after we sold the airline, the other challenge that I had, I'd been exposed to as well, I'd been a career mentor to students uh, from the universities that I attended, and I had some smart students that couldn't find the right job. And so that problem was one I was really wrestling with. At the same time, I had an opportunity to start teaching at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in airline management. And so when I started teaching, when I got into that classroom, you know, 50 students that would sit there and listen for two hours in the traditional lecture, I knew that's not what I needed them to do at the airline. We needed them to do different things than sitting and listening to me. And so that was one thing that was going on. But at the same time, I happened to be um, affiliated with the Duke Alumni Association, met up with a dean from Duke's medical school in Singapore about showing a basketball game. Um, and so it was a lunch about a basketball game. So Brian, what are you doing? Well, I'm interested in education technology. I said, oh, great. We're looking for somebody to commercialize the education technology we built for team-based learning. I was like, huh, what's that? Tell me more. Well, I learned about what they were doing, which is, and Julie will get more into this, about a form of blended learning, flipped classroom, and getting the basics down of content and then applying it. It absolutely resonated with me because when I earned my pilot's license, I did the same thing. Uh, my instructor gave me the FAA textbook, the written exam, get the content down first, and then apply it. And so that totally resonated. And it's the, the challenge I was facing in the classroom to make my classroom really prepare students for what they needed to do when they went to work for the airline. Um, when I found out about this team-based learning model, it absolutely clicked with me. I joined Duke NUS Medical School, took the software they built, and then went on a, a, a program to really turn it into a company and, and bring a greater scale. And so as we did that, um, I experienced the challenges of trying to do team-based learning with the, a lot of the existing ed tech tools. And Canvas is great for so many different things. And I, I teach with it myself. Um, but some of the team-based part, it wasn't exactly built for the team-based part. Sort of like email wasn't exactly built for teams. It makes it a little bit clunky. And so we, we use the software tool to make some of the team-based learning bits uh, work a little bit better and, and help the workload. And so what I did, like any sort of entrepreneur, I said, well, I have this problem. I built a solution or I have a solution that works for me. Will this work for other people? And so what I did, I started going around, reaching out to other educators to see other educators have the same problem too. And in 2016, I was down, down in uh, Mississippi for my grandmother's uh, 101st birthday. And I knew that University of South Alabama was just down the road. So I visited Julie and her team and said, hey, have you had these sort of challenges? 
you know, would this sort of solution work? And she said, well, actually it would, but you need to do something a little bit different with confidence-based testing and team-based learning model. I said, okay, great, no problem. Give me six weeks, we can do it. Um, and they sort of became our, our first real customer. Um, and we've, you know, moved pretty far along since then. But let me turn it over to Judy, Julie. Hey there. So I'll tell you a little bit really quickly about how I came to start doing team-based learning. I'm kind of your typical faculty member. I started on faculty in speech language pathology here at the University of South Alabama in 2004. And I was one of those nerdy kind of people who would go to all the sessions at the Teaching and Learning Center, learning how to use new techniques in my classroom implementing tech tools in my classroom as they emerge. So I'm kind of an early adopter of those kinds of things and always on the hunt for ways to improve. But I noticed that my students often were disconnected in what they knew and what they were able to do. So just really incredibly talented students who could ace a test every time, but then I would be in clinic with them and it was a little bit hard to translate that knowledge over to clinical practice sometimes. And I also noticed around 2012 or so, this is when I, I came to TBL and started using it. I was really wanting to find ways to engage my students in meaningful ways and motivate them to come to class prepared and to talk and be active in the classroom. Uh, you know, if you think about the difference between 2004 and 2012, something pretty big happened in that time. We, in 2012, we all had smartphones on us. And so students were able to look up any fact, um, any piece of data, and have real-time information on the latest information. So I was like, my role in this whole situation has to change. I'm no longer the keeper of all the ideas who gives them to you, the students, but let's see how we can build your knowledge and skills by taking this information you have and solving real problems with it. So as I was thinking about all these things, our campus started a project focused on using team-based learning across disciplines to improve student collaboration and problem-solving skills. And so I kind of jumped right in and I'm really glad that I did because now we have different challenges in the classroom. They might look a little bit more like this, but thankfully through the years, TBL has held up as a way to keep students motivated and engaged, whether you're in person or online. And Julie, really, it's interesting. The slide before, I'm sure a lot of teachers were like, they probably thought that was a that is such the <laughs> that is such the um, a live shot of everyone's classroom right now. They're like they're watching it on their computer. They may be doing a little work, maybe some grading. They're looking at you know our live stream, obviously, but then they look out and they're like, wait a minute, do they have us on camera? Because that looked exactly <laughs> like what a common classroom looks like today, right? Yes. Yes, and we don't want it to look that way. We want our classrooms to be vibrant and energetic with a lot of talking and learning going on. Eddie, if it's okay with you, I know we've been like using this phrase team-based learning yeah. a lot. So this might be a good point for me to just clarify, you know, what do we mean when we're talking about team-based learning? Because some people, when I'm like, oh, I do team-based learning, um, I'm the president of the team-based learning collaborative, and we talk about how to do collaborative learning, people start to sometimes get hives, of, you know, based on their bad experiences with group work. I know, you know, a lot of us have some memories of opportunities to work on a team, or maybe you've been on a committee lately, and you can <laughs> relate. Right. And so, one thing that I was intrigued from the beginning with team-based learning is that it really does take away a lot of those problems that we often encounter. And it does that through a sequence of structured events in the classroom rather than just independent small group activities. So this is just a quick overview of what a content module in a team-based learning course looks like. It starts with preparation. As Brian mentioned, this is where that principle of flipped learning comes in. We have the individual students doing some work ahead of time. And as the instructor, we're keeping backward design principles in mind and focusing on particular student learning outcomes. Comes. So this preparation could be reading materials, study guides, videos, anything that prepares the students for an entryway into solving problems related to the content. From there, we move into the readiness assurance process, and this process involves an individual test on that preparation material, and then the students take that test 
as individuals, they turn right around and take it in their permanent teams. So they benefit from the health of each other. And in this process, you hear them saying things like, well, I chose A because of this. No, I think it's B. And they come to a consensus and then they get immediate feedback. Um, and that's where the tools that we use become really important to give them immediate feedback as they in each of those questions together in a team. And in fact, they keep answering until they get to the correct answer. So at that point, students really understand a lot of the basics, the terminology, you know, instead of getting up in front of the classroom or on the screen and giving a lot of definitions or theoretical principles, they've already had some foundational knowledge in those basics, and now they're ready to start solving problems. And we do this in a, a pretty unique way too, through application activities, where each team gets the same problem. It's a significant or meaningful, relevant problem for the discipline area. And then it narrows down to a specific choice that they all report back at the same time. So there's no room for divide and conquer here. Everybody works together to come to a solution and to report that back at the same time and defend their choice, tell us why they made that decision. So that's kind of the quick overview of a module. And we see what happens here is unique individual responsibility and accountability merged with teamwork. And some of the basic components that we really want to keep in mind with team-based learning, we want those teams to be properly formed and managed. We want them to be large enough to give the skills that are needed on that team. We want to bring as many diverse skills and backgrounds to that team as we can. And they're based on criteria related to the course. And we keep students in those teams over a long period period of time so they can move from groups into true teams as they solve problems together. So that's kind of a quick overview of what TBL looks like and the components of the structure. Thanks, Julie. And I might, might add to that if it's okay, Eddie, from the employer perspective. Absolutely. When I see what they're doing, if you go back to the last one, slide five real quick, I see responsibility, accountability. <laughs> that's exactly what we're looking for. And I see heterogeneous, diverse teams. Now, if we go on to the next slide six, um, what I love about this stuff is that the world is no longer about what you can do as an individual. An individual task will get an AI chat bot or digitization will take that job. It's the complicated problems. I think back to my days at the airline, you know, we had a, um, a maintenance provider back a pickup truck into one of our aircraft. It damaged our aircraft. And that's a hard problem to solve. It's a maintenance problem. It's a legal problem because we have to take legal action. It's a finance problem. I have to estimate the damages as CFO or finance organization. And all different elements of this sort of problem. And you need four or five people working together from different backgrounds, different abilities to solve that complicated problem. And that's really what gets me excited about this. That's where students are going to need to go and do. And so when you do this, you see your classrooms, they don't look like the 20 students that just sit there you know, brain fried, which is sort of what I knew that was not my work, they look more like what we see here. People sitting around, solving a problem, making decisions, making real decisions. And that's what makes it so uh, more acceptable to students too. We say, hey, look, here's what we're going to do. Point A, point B, which plane we're going to fly, Airbus or Boeing, 20 minutes, come back. We got to make a decision. And that's exactly what they need to do in the workplace. So that's what really gets me excited about this and really preparing our students for that next, next step they'll need to make for. Awesome. I, I just have a quick question, you know, how obviously the pandemic, we, and I love that we've been 13 minutes into this thing and we haven't said the word pandemic. We might have, we might have, but I don't, I don't necessarily know if we've made it, made it a point. Um, it's coming, Eddie, don't worry. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. And I hate it. I don't love saying it anymore. Um, you know, I, what sort of problems has into dashboard, you know, um, what, what sort of solutions have they, you know, come up with for folks that just had to go online very quickly, right? You moved online quickly. Um, I mean, are, are there things that have been changed since kind of the first edition of the platform? Maybe people that tried it, you know, there might be people joining us that have tried it, uh, you know, previous, you know, in, in a previous version. And now they're looking at the new version um, today. Yeah. What are some things that they're going to notice that might help them in our, we'll say it, new normal, right? Yeah, sure. No, that's right. I mean, actually, if we go to slide seven, maybe we'll just talk about the, the roadmap to getting here. Yeah, and in some ways, it sort of almost teed up perfectly. 
So when this started in 2000, you know, seven, eight years ago, this is really about saving time with grading, automating paper-based processes. And that's what it was about. And then when we did that, what we realized is that we're putting all this data on a database. And if we have that data on data, why don't we share that data with instructors um, in real time? Because we can. You know, my background is a pilot. So when you're a pilot, you have information that comes at you every few seconds. Are we too high, too low, too fast, or too slow? If you think about an educator in a classroom, especially these active team-based learning classrooms, you need to know, am I too high, too low, too fast, or too slow? So you can really calibrate your teaching to the weak spots or the trouble spots or the right pace. And you know, like I say, as a pilot, we have this all the time. We get it. There's, and now we said, okay, we have all the things digitized. There's no reason educators shouldn't have that same information too. So that was the second sort of thing that we did. And the third thing is, well, gosh, we've digitized the whole process. We've given the automated dashboards to instructors. So when we shift online, we actually have all the key components in place. It was actually about three and a half years ago that Julie and I were like, hey, we should really experiment with some of this online stuff. It's becoming, and so we started doing factory development online. And so we started doing live online events about three, four years ago. And the first 20 were very, very difficult. I wouldn't say it's a, maybe it's a disaster. Um, you know, the way I describe it as a pilot is like when you fly in the clouds, you can't see a thing and you still need to keep the plane in the sky. It was sort of the same type of thing. So we applied that same sort of uh, idea and thinking about how do we create the product um, that gives you the data you need so you can teach in the cloud. So you can, you can teach blind is really what we we're doing. And so that was a big piece of what we did. And then the, the other thing that we did is that you the, the, the workload is high. The cognitive workload is high. You got Zoom, you got the ed tech tools, you got this, 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 this. It's really high workload. It's exactly like flying in the clouds or flying in a thunderstorm. And uh, maybe that's what people do. It's like teaching in a thunderstorm is how you describe teaching in COVID online. And so we just need to make those processes streamlined, efficient. The buttons are where you need it. The facilitation is, is categorized the way you need it. The things that you need to make that, that smoother. Okay, you can see the names of the teams. You can see them all played up. And that's the sort of things that we, we really focused on doing. We started that about three, four years ago. So when people shifted online, it was a little bit smoother switch. I don't know, Julie, you can, you can talk about your experience because you did it. You know. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So, you know, having this tool in our toolkit was incredibly important when we shifted to remote instruction at the beginning of the pandemic. And because we were already using this tool on our campus in some context, we were easily able to scale that up, get others on board. And, you know, that extended spring break we had with just enough time to shift over to remote instruction and come back, it allowed us to continue active, engaging learning, even in a remote environment. And so, it was really a powerful tool for us to keep up our plans for the courses, keep up the plans for engagement and just using the tools available. Um, so it was tremendous to us during that time to have that. And we've used it across many different disciplines on our campus as well. So it has that flexibility um, to be used in a variety of contexts. And one thing I'll say as we've returned to in-person learning, our digital native students have been very eager to continue using into dashboard even in a face-to-face -face environment so in the course that i teach this semester it's right there integrated into my canvas course site on that left nav bar <laughs> so the students are familiar with it it's right there and at the very beginning of the course they said hey are we going to keep using into dashboard for irat and trat and i was like yes i'm so glad you said that because you know it really makes my life a lot easier to not bring all those printed materials into the classroom. And as Brian mentioned earlier, while they are taking the individual and team readiness assurance test, I'm watching the data in real time and planning ahead. So I'm planning my timing. I'm noticing, oh no, they are all missing question number three. Let me pull together some thoughts for a mini lecture to provide clarification when we all come back together. So um, into dashboard has been a great tool for me personally and for our institution as we've weathered these changes. You know, yeah. and I'm going to add a little anecdote with what students want. You mentioned digital natives wanting technology in their classroom. I actually had another customer say that um, their students found it environmentally friendly as well which I thought was a really interesting perspective from students at that age, but they were really concerned about the whole paper process and all the paper that was being used and wasted when it could all be digitized and they prefer it. That was one of the reasons that they gave for preferring Inti Dashboard over the paper process. 
Yeah, I mean, look at it from an employer perspective. I mean, again, that's the lens that I look at a lot of this stuff. Every company will need people to work in a virtual team. That's a, it's a skill set that's not going away. The world's globalizing, and this is really important for that. And even to Karen's point before, I mean, we're not filling out papers and forms at the office the way we were 25, 30, 40 years ago. Everything's digitized. So it's really about, I mean, I look, my lens is always about how do we prepare students for the workforce and give them meaningful, uh, successful careers. And the economy's changing, and that takes different things. So this is what really excites me about it, because we can keep preparing them even as we shift to these different uh, modalities. And to that point, most companies are have distributed teams across, not just across one country, but across around the world, including us. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, I wonder how many educators in the room are joining us, which I'm assuming a lot of the folks that are that are watching are, are just stone cold educators, right? Yeah. Um, I think this, this concept of team-based learning, and Julie, you kind of touched upon it at the beginning, but the, the concept of, of team-based learning may be really foreign to some of them. Um, so, you know, what are some things, like if I'm new, I knew when uh, there started to be some conversation around um, universal design learning and, and project-based learning, the first thing I did was like jump on YouTube and watch like some TED Talks and some other things on. Like what what's the best thing to do? I know you said like when that concept kind of started to develop itself into what you wanted to do, I'm sure there were some strategies or some things that you looked at. Like what, what can I do as an educator to learn more about team-based learning? Absolutely. There are a lot of great resources out there. Um, the Team-Based Learning Collaborative is an international organization that focuses on using team-based learning. And we've partnered with Into Dashboard to offer online fundamentals training in team-based learning. Um, and then the Team-Based Learning Collaborative offers a certificate program. So you go through the five fundamentals principles and practices of team-based learning. Um, it's five three-hour workshops, and then you can earn a certificate in that fundamentals um, program. And so that's a really great way to get started. I also have to say over and over again, it's so important to connect with others, to have that community around you and support around you as you try something new like this. And so rope some friends into exploring it with you, um, someone just to bounce some ideas off of. And it's a really supportive community around the world. Um, the folks who use team-based learning are very generous in sharing ideas and resources and connecting. You know, we hear, oh, you're doing team-based learning in mathematics. Well, here are my colleagues who are doing it in that area as well, trying to make those connections and really support one another. Utilize the team to learn more about yes. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine how that exactly. Works. Very collaborative mindset. Very collaborative. <laughs> I love to hear it. Brian, um, you know, I, again, I, we'll go back to, to our viewers here in our audience, yes. um, but they are probably going not another, you, you one more thing. Like what yeah, another, yeah. right? Like yeah. how much work truly, and Julie can speak to this and, and maybe Karen a little bit as well. How much yeah. work really is there in implementing a, what you would consider a true team-based yeah. learning environment in a class? Yeah, look, I think like everything, it's sort of, you can make it a full hard, right. but what we learned in March of 2020 is I've seen educators move and change and adapt faster than I ever would have thought possible in my life. So I am continually amazed by how fast people have, have, have evolved and even some that may have, I wouldn't have expected them to evolve. Um, they evolve fast in a period of weeks and days. So I absolutely think it can be done. Um, attitude's the biggest thing. The trick is taking your existing materials and tweaking them. A lot of these things aren't foreign. Pre-reading, no problem. Right. A quiz, great. We just repeat it with the team and that increases outcomes like 20%. Cases or scenarios, patient cases are being done all the time, business cases done all the time. So it's just a matter of taking a lot of the existing things that folks are doing and perhaps adding a little bit of structure, immediate feedback, getting some of the data bits um, fed, and then you really sort of turbocharge it. So it's, it's really, I mean, in some ways, group work's been around a long time. There's a famous basketball coach from Duke. He apparently had this analogy about Groups versus teams. I don't know if you've heard this one, Eddie. Mm -mm. Uh, you're Indiana. No, I'm, an, I'm an Indiana fan, so we don't mention Duke. <laughs> no, there are just some universities we don't talk about in my household. Right. My totally wife's also right. an Auburn fan, so we don't mention Alabama. 
Um, anybody in the SEC, that's all for him. So, yeah. So, right. it, it could have come from Bobby Knight. Who knows? Okay, perfect. That's a great yeah. analogy here. I think this coach used to work for Bobby Knight, so it's probably fine. As I said, here's a team of finger. Here's a team like this. Here's a team of fingers. You know, you try to punch a wall, you will break your fingers. Right. Right. This is a group of fingers. You punch a wall, you'll break your fingers. You got them working together. This is a team of fingers. And really what this is about is doing those steps, you know, quote, team building activities, warm up activities, so that when we're going into this, it's not group work. Group work is this. You pound your, your group into the wall, you'll break your fingers. This is teamwork. Teamwork will break the wall. And so that's what we're really trying to do is put this scaffolding steps processing in place to make a group of fingers a team of fingers. And that's what provides real value um, in the education process, but also in their, their workforce development process as well. You know, I didn't, it's funny, Brian, you know, I love that analogy, but I just saw it again as you had your fingers up. Julie had mentioned there's no divide and conquer in team-based learning. Your fingers are divided. Um, so there's none of that, but this, they're all working together in unison and sharing the responsibility. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And managing, I think a lot of it might be managing egos as well, right? People feel they're one of those fingers might be a little bit bigger than the others, um, <laughs> right? And and they might get in the way of helping those other. I'm just going along with finger analogy. I apologize. I cut Julie off. Probably should have just stuck with that. Um, but yeah, I, I do think there's there's part of that too. So I I I'm curious more about you know we talk about diversity and equity and inclusion and, and, and really accessibility and education. Um, and I, I love the things that I've seen about team-based learning. I'm a big project-based learning guy as well, but the things I've seen is it, it really breaks down those barriers. So, so, you know, what have you guys seen? Obviously you're in this work, you're in the trenches every day, but like breaking down those barriers for some of these, um, you know, hot topics in education right now. Yeah, I'll be glad to speak to that, Eddie. I'm really glad you brought that up because here as a part of a five-year campus-wide initiative, we were able to dig into some of the outcomes that we're, we were seeing with team-based learning. And one of the elements that came through in some qualitative analysis we did of student responses to team-based learning, they said, I learned to hear others, pers the perspectives of others. And this was a few years back. Um, we weren't talking quite as much um, explicitly about some of these important topics, but students Students were recognizing that by working together in a team that they didn't pick their own teammates, their teammates were put together based on criteria within that course, they learned how to value the perspectives of others. And I found that students will speak out in this environment a lot more than you would see in a typical classroom environment. Um, you can think about a Zoom call. You know, if you've got 30 people on Zoom, a lot of times only three or four are speaking out. And the same thing can happen in a large classroom environment. But what you see in team-based learning is almost everyone speaks to someone during that session. And so even the student who might not feel as comfortable being the one who reports their team conclusion, they're participating in the process of coming to that conclusion with their teammates. And so we've seen some real benefits of helping students hear the perspective of others, value the unique strengths of their team members, and, um, and really come together to solve problems. I mean, I'd add on that too, and an important point is that some students from, uh, you know, disadvantaged groups have seen their outcome gap narrow to majority advantaged students. In the UK, they had the, the ethnic achievement gap narrow in team-based learning classes versus lecture classes. And that to me is really, really important. I mean, a part of this is, yeah, okay, workforce, yep, save time for educators, yep. But in today's world, we need more people that have a collaborative mindset that know how to work with other people and can do that. And so this is an approach that everyone does better in a team-based learning environment, um, particularly those that are, are most at risk tend to have the, the, the biggest gain in these environments. We have talked so much in 30 minutes um, and we've learned so much, but I, I do want to make sure and give you guys, Brian, a, a chance as well to show product features and some things that, that really sure. create, you know, get, and that's what we get with a lot of Canvas and Instructure stuff as those folks that are watching know, 
um, you're going to get a lot of just the, the pedagogy and leadership and, and discussion before even showing you what this thing is, right? Uh, which is, they get it. So they, uh, don't be like, we spent 30 minutes and we didn't really even get to see the product. They understand um, because this is what we do because we all are educators at heart and and we really love the the support and mission that a lot of the products that we do bring into the EdTech Collective provide to us. So absolutely 100%, we want you to show the product off. So I'm going to sure. get out of the way for a little bit, let you kind of run through that. We'll see if any questions come through on the chat and then we'll sure. wrap things up if that sounds okay. Yeah, that sounds great. So we could just shift over to slide eight. And, you know, we'll do it briefly because I agree with you that the, the methodology is the most important bit. You know, the software is just a tool to support it. So a lot of things that we like to do is have the live uh, teacher dashboards, um, see how they perform individually, see how they perform as a team. A lot of times we'll see individually they do about 20 percent worse than as a team. So as an instructor, you don't need to go over everything. You could just zoom in on the trouble spots. And these are some of the dashboards uh, that we prepare. If you go to the next slide, which is slide nine. Um, this is an example of how the different teams have been performing. We'll see in question three, the yellow box there, that um, it took three tries for the team to get it right, whereas the other, a lot of other teams got it right in the first try. You see the order in which teams are selecting. And if on the column on the right, uh, question five, it looked like a couple teams took a few additional tries to get two. And that's the sort of information you get. So while the teams are working off in their different breakout groups or in the different areas of the classroom, you'll sort of have a window into what they're thinking and what they're getting right and what they're getting wrong. And then you as an educator, you have time to prepare uh, to get ready to sort of facilitate that. And exactly like what we're thinking about in the, the airline thing is that you, you need, there's a high stress load of an active learning classroom. You don't know which way the questions are coming from. Well, this is, you have a clue as to where they're getting off track. If you go to slide 10, in this example, um, we should have some different facilitation screens, again, for larger, smaller classes, 10, 20, 30 teams. How'd you respond? Okay, team two, we said use Airbus. Team four, we said use Boeing. Okay, who's right, who's wrong? Let's facilitate a discussion around that. And then if you go to slide 11, um, we have opportunities for the teams to raise up clarification or questions, and they can do this during the assessments. So while the students are working, while the teams are working off in their different breakout rooms or parts of the classroom, we actually know what questions they're going to ask, which is great. Sometimes as you go to an active learning environment, you don't know who's going to ask what, and it's a little bit nerve wracking. But I have five or 10 minutes while they're working to look up the answers, check my notes, or references, or even facilitate around it. Team 16 had this concern. OK, great. Team 5, why don't you address what team question 16 had. And for some shyer individuals or teams, they may um, you know, be less comfortable saying, hey, we don't understand, but they may be more comfortable typing it in, which is great. And then as you go back to continuously improve your class teacher, you'll have a data record of what were all the questions that came up. Um, so you can really dial in um, your improvement. And I think if we go on to the last one, um, you know, just the last bit is, is uh, on, on the, the software side. If you have more questions about the software, we can, you know, my colleague Karen, who's on the line, can get uh, you know, more into that with you as well. Uh, she's based in the U.S. So we just have a little bit of the technology. I'm happy to go in more. We love talking about it and showing about it. But the real core of it, as you said, Eddie, is really the pedagogy and the approach and what it does for students. Absolutely. And I think so many times a lot of ed tech softwares, and I'm glad we, we had that opportunity and I'm glad you guys are on the, on the same. Oh, I don't necessarily know if you'd be part of our ed tech collective if you didn't, but I, I love that. I think so many times a lot of software companies, a lot of ed tech software companies see a quick fix and then they jump out there and then they create something that, that educators may latch onto or may not latch onto, but it doesn't have any staying power because they're not focused on, that solution that is going to be built around not what is going to create more efficiency for teachers or what's going to it's it's built around what's better for students and what will create um, a better learning environment and create more engagement so that they can have an overall better educational experience in my in my mind so i'm so glad that we had this opportunity obviously you guys are crushing it over there <laughs> the dashboard i've actually i'm putting the link right now in the uh in the chat for anybody that that would like it uh, we didn't have any questions come through that's how fantastic we did today um but i'm sure more questions will come uh as always they can reach out to either karen here at into dashboard is it is it just juliad is it brian at i mean is that the easiest way if folks want to get a hold of you directly or should they just reach out to karen um to to kind of facilitate the conversation yeah, I mean, Karen's probably the best point of contact. You also reach out to me, at Brian, at NT Dashboard. And then Julie's at University of South Alabama. So I think it might be a different address there. Okay. So I've, I put that link in there. We really appreciate you again, Julie, Karen, Brian. Let's just keep crushing it. I mean, I can't wait to see what this thing looks like. And, and we hope to have you back on the live stream. That's going to happen. 
um, cool. sooner rather than later. Um, but make sure that, you know, you're keeping us up to date on all the great things. So we appreciate you. Wonderful. We appreciate that too, Eddie. Yeah. All thanks right. so much. Yeah. Thank you guys. As always, we are wrapping up another live stream. We will have another one next week. So be on the lookout on all of our social channels. Make sure you're subscribed, liking, doing all the things. If you have any questions, please reach out to these fine folks, or you can reach out to me, Eddie, or at Small Indiana. That's the easiest thing. Eddie.small at instructor.com or at Small Indiana at uh, on Twitter, because that's where I live. Um, unfortunately, I don't live in this house. I live on Twitter. That's what my wife would say. So we're headed out of here. Again, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, guys, Julie, Brian. And thank, thank you. Thanks. Well done, Eddie. Great work.